Hi, I'm Steve Selig, founder of Fit Test, and this is part of a series of aortic stenosis for exercise professionals. In part three, which is this video, I'm going to just share with you how I, as an exercise professional, can work very effectively with clients with this major disease of aortic stenosis. And remembering that uh, patients, some people with aortic stenosis, uh, will be contraindicated for exercise. I'm going to show you how to work through that particular challenge. And I'm also going to present uh, related to exactly that point of case study. So what we need to do as exercise physiologists is we need to adjust for the pressure drop across this diseased valve, this tight um, calcified valve. In part one of this series, I spent a fair bit of time talking about these pressure drops, uh, which also interfere with the flow across here. But the, the basic point is that the pressures in the left ventricle have to be very, very high or much higher than normal, much higher than, than uh, desirable, uh, in order to work, overcome this obstruction so that there's reasonable stroke volume and cardiac output out into the aorta. And we call this pressure drop the left ventricular to uh, aorta pressure gradient. So we really want to know what that gradient is, and I'm going to spend a bit of time on that on this slide. So first of all, this is just a, uh, an example record here where if we take these last three cardiac cycles, where we've got a, um, a left ventricular pressure of about 190 to 195 and 150 brachial artery, in other words, uh, well, a aorta, which will then be measured in the brachial artery, there's a 40 millimetre of mercury pressure drop across the tight valve, whereas normally that pressure drop across here would be no more than 5 or 10. And even with a valve replacement, it'd be no more than about 10 or you know, 10 or 12. So a pressure drop of 40 across here means that the left ventricle has to work very much harder to generate that extra pressure to produce the cardiac output. And that's what this pressure drop's all about. And so if we want to, um, ex if we want to work with these clients safely and effectively, we need to adjust for the left ventricular aorta pressure gradient. And so the first thing you really need to know is what is it? So what I come to now is brachial artery pressures, which is what we're all familiar with measuring. Of course, this is pointless in terms of knowing what is going on in the most important chamber in the heart, the left ventricle, if all we're doing is measuring that and we don't know what this pressure gradient is. So we really want to know the severity of the disease. And now I'm going to show you how I deal with that. So the severity of aortic stenosis if we have mild disease, and we can certainly exercise clients with mild disease, then the aortic valve area will be in the range of 1.2 to 1.8 centimetres squared. So that's the area of the aperture of the opening. And the mean left ventricular aortic pressure gradient will be in the range of 12 to 25. And I've highlighted 25 here because if you only know the disease is mild, or if you only know what the valve area is in this range here, but you don't know what the pressure gradient is here, assume the larger number of 25. Now I'll give you an example. So suppose in this example, uh, um, uh, brachial artery pressure was 150. We would need to add 25 on to make left ventricular pressure 175 as an estimate. Now this changes the whole dynamic of your uh, assessment of blood pressures um, in terms of safety and effectiveness for exercise. Now, just to quote a couple of figures, the American College of Sports Medicine or the American Heart Association actually recommends that you don't exercise someone with a resting pressure above 200 millimetres of mercury. For my own comfort zone, I make that about 180 rather than 200. The American Heart Association goes on to recommend that exercise should be stopped when blood pressure reaches 250. Now, if we're going to take 250, this means that someone in this condition with mild aortic stenosis, we would need to stop that exercise test not at 250, but at 225 after we've subtracted this 25 off. In other words, we're adding 25 to this. If we measure 225, in the brachial artery when someone is exercising, 
then the left ventricular pressure is probably somewhere around uh, 250 in the example of mild disease. It's a guide, but it's a very useful guide. Now, having explained that, then moderate disease is quite easy to understand using the same uh, approach. So the aortic valve area, 0.8 to 1.2 centimetres squared. Now the mean left ventricular aorta pressure gradient is 25 to 40. If you don't know what the pressure gradient is, but you know the person has moderate disease, or you know the valve area is in this range, then add 40. If you know what the pressure gradient is, then you can add the actual pressure gradient to brachial artery pressure. So I'll give you two, I'll give you an example. So if, if brachial artery pressure is 140 and you do know the gradient to be 30, you just add 30 and that makes the left ventricular, um, uh, uh, left ventricular systolic blood pressure 170, 140 plus the 30. And you can exercise up to 220, adding the 30 here, we get to the 250. However, if you didn't know the gradient to be 30, you would assume the larger number and add the 40. Now, when we come to severe disease, this appears on the American College of Sports Medicine absolute contraindication list. So the valve area, 0.6 to 0.8 centimetres squared, the mean left ventricular aorta pressure gradient in the range of 40 to 50, and in, even if it's 40, you don't exercise this person. You can give them a bit of gentle walking, but hopefully these are going to be candidates for either valve replacement, surgery, or TAVI or TAVR. Now, uh, so we can't really, there's no point in really dealing with the 40 to 50 in this setting, except if you measured, for example, if brachial artery pressure was 140 and the gradient was 50, then that would make left ventricular pressure 190 or thereabouts. But it's really just for your information because we are not going to exercise them. So th these patients here, and the next one's critical, where the gradient is more than 50, these two last groups, have absolute contraindication to exercise according to the American College of Sports Medicine. So now I come to my case. So this is a person with moderate aortic stenosis. So on the basis of this, um, we, uh, we can exercise them assuming the gradient is 40 rather than 25. Uh, this person ended up going on to aortic valve replacement and I'll show you in a minute. So they had a progression of disease where the gradient went above 45 millimetres of mercury and so they had an aortic valve replacement. But the first time I saw him was pre-aortic valve replacement in 2018 and I assumed at that point the gradient to be 40. So I was adding 40 on to every brachial artery pressure measurement. He also had shortness of breath on exertion and exercise-induced asthma and he had low heart rates in, in exercise. Now that was the ECG, which looks like a very normal ECG. Uh, we're not looking at a great deal of uh, ventricular hypertrophy here that you could get with um, left ventricular hypertrophy related to long-standing aortic stenosis. We didn't see that here. But the interesting thing is when I saw him in 2019, post aortic valve replacement, he had his ECG had changed markedly and he had now uh, what is called left bundle branch block, which is very easily seen in lead V6 and uh, to a lesser extent in lead 1, the reciprocal of V6 is in V1. But this is um, a broadening out and also an RSR dash pattern in V5 and V6, not so much in V5, but it's in V6. And so this is um, um, a, a new left bundle branch block. And I went to look at the literature on this and I found two very good papers that I've referred to at the bottom. And the, what the, um, the first paper is suggesting uh, is that um, there is new left bundle branch block uh, it related to the surgical and other uh, the surgery. In other words, the aortic valve that is being replaced is quite close to the um, hispokinji uh conducting system of the left ventricle, or the ventricle, sorry. And uh, so that the conducting system was um, interfered with during the surgery. And so he um, came out of that surgery with new left bundle branch block, which, um, he, which stayed with him, uh, per, which stays with him now permanently. There are about 5% of surgical aortic valve replacement patients uh, end up with new left bundle branch block. 
And after TAVI, which is not what he underwent, he underwent aortic valve replacement, but under TAVI, it's about 17%, about one in, I think one in six or seven uh, patients who have TAVI will have new AF, a new left bundle branch block after the intervention. Now, what's the significance of this? Well, left bundle branch block is on the contraindication list for, ex for exercise. You can proceed with exercise, but with caution. And I would certainly avoid high intensity exercise, and we do avoid high intensity exercise in this person that has now in left bundle branch block. That's quite important. So I've just capped the exercise intensity at moderate intensity and moderate volumes, and interval training is very good. Now, how would you know that someone had or didn't have? Because it's one in 20 of the surgical patients and one in six or seven of the TAVI, uh, TAVA um, patients have this new left bundle branch block. You really, um, you can use some single lead ECG methods to detect this. Um, any sort of widening of the QRS or change of the morphology pre and post. Of course, you'd need to have the pre and post ECG to really make head or tail of this. But the other thing you could do is just ask the, uh, the medical practitioners, uh, they should know whether the person has new left bundle branch block uh, post uh, intervention. So it's important to know, and then you can guard against uh, some nasty ventricular arrhythmias and tachy arrhythmias uh, related to left bundle branch block. But it, it's not um, every patient by any means, but there's a significant number of them enough of them for me to mention it and to present this case study. Um, and so that's all I wanted to say on this case study. Thank you for watching and you can contact me at info at myfittest.com.au. Bye for now and have a great day.